Global Eco Energy sell and install renewable energy products to domestic, commercial, and public sector customers. With access to a wide range of renewable energy products, including solar PV, battery storage, air source heat pumps, and eco garden makeovers, we offer a bespoke service tailored to your exact needs. For a free quote and to find out more about grants and funding options, go to global eco.co.uk. The Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. Design your bespoke solar PV system and meet your energy needs with no upfront costs. Let's go! So the first silverware of the season goes to Rangers. The Philippe Clément era is well and truly underway. Mark Weedy is with us tonight and the former Rangers star is with us from Australia, Oz himself. Craig Moore, Craig... Good night partying for you. First uh, League Cup win in what, 12 years? 12 years, yeah. Look, um, it, was a, a, it wasn't an unbelievable match, Paul. No, there's no doubting that. But Philip Clement was brought in to, to try and improve this squad in terms of performances. And the first opportunity to win a trophy was the, the League Cup. First time in 12, 12 years. Um, and for me, um, really important for Clement. Uh, and, and Rangers moving forward if they're going to have a tilt at the at the title this season. They'll certainly have some confidence lifting the first trophy, but also that's now 14 matches uh, for Clement unbeaten. So he's had a, a tremendous start. He really has. What about the captain, James Tavernier? Mark, over the years, he had so much criticism, but he took his goal so well yesterday and he made the difference. Yeah, he was a leader uh, yesterday, Paul. The captain's role, it wasn't a great game, so he had to at some point get it with the scruff of the neck and, and has has been the case so often in his six or seven years at, at Rangers he popped up with a, 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 defi- a decisive moment and he got the winning goal and they credit to him because I think sometimes he's been a, a whipping boy a target for the Rangers supporters when things don't go well and again we've said it many times but you know Matt Warburton signed him for £300,000 he's been outstanding value of course he's got his faults Every player in Scottish football has got faults, Paul. Otherwise, they wouldn't be playing at this level. They'd be away off somewhere else. So he led by example yesterday, got Rangers a victory, first trophy in the bag, and credit to Philippe Clement and his staff for, for getting that job done after just 10 weeks in the row. We'll talk Celtic in a few moments as well after Celtic losing back-to-back in the league for the first time. I don't know how long it has been, but our guests in the studio tonight will tell us more of that shortly. On the line, a big Rangers fan, Derek is on the line. Derek, good evening. Good evening, Paul. Good evening, panel. Hi, uh, hi Derek. The panel th- I've got a few points. Does the panel think that Rangers should go on and win the treble if they sign a couple of signings in January? And my other point is, does Mark Goody do think Brendan Rodgers is going to stomach for this fight? Or do you think he's not going to... Uh, he, he would rather get out of this. All right, so it's been a huge weekend, Derek, for you and for Rangers fans. Uh, sharp contrast to when Celtic beat Rangers at Ibrox and you were on the phone and, and you were almost in despair. First up, yep. Craig, what would you say about Rangers and could they win the, the treble? Look, I mean, they, they've given themselves the best chance, obviously, by winning the, the first trophy of the season. Um, look, Clement has, has turned this squad around. Uh, there's no doubt about that, and I... Um, he's going to strengthen also in January. So this is a team that I still think is, is going to get better. Um, so the, the, the treble is, is definitely an option. But again, you're not going to hear that kind of talk, Derek, coming out of Philip Clement's mouth. It's going to be one, one game at a time, uh, as boring as that sounds. But that's, that's the way he's got the, the players and the staff and everybody involved. It's, it's game by game. Um, but January, there'll definitely be some strengthening, I think, to, to have a serious tilt at the title. Mark, what would you say to Philippe Clement about him and the way he's handling himself? And what about the question? Uh, if they win the two games in hand, Rangers will be top of the table. <clears throat> well, they're the only team that can win the treble. That, that's a fact. Um, can they win it? Well, of course they can win it. Will they win it? That's a different question. Let's see where everybody is at the end of January when the window closes. That's going to be paramount. And for Rangers as well, Go and show that you can avoid, not necessarily beat Celtic in December the 30th, but avoid defeat. That's a step in the right direction uh, for Philippe Clement and his first game as Rangers manager against Celtic in front of 60,000 um, Celtic supporters. Clearly Celtic are there for the taking right now, but a lot can change between now and December the 30th. Rangers have won the first trophy, they're unbeaten in 14 games and their new manager, so they would, you would consider them the form team just now, but don't rule out Celtic. Too many winners at Celtic. 
um, Paul, for them to be ruled out. And for Rangers as well, where I think the benefit will come in the next few weeks with Philippe Clermont at the, at the helm is he won't, as you said, he won't entertain treble talk. Michael Beale might fall into that trap, but the players will be well versed to keep it steady. One trophy has been won, but ultimately the league is the top prize. Right now, Celtic sit top of the table. So go about your job quietly and effectively, effectively as you have been doing for the last 10 weeks. If you get carried away, it might come back and bite you. So just keep things in-house and keep it going along steadily. But there's a lot to be decided, Paul, between now and January 2nd when we get to the winter break and then the, the transfer window itself when it opens. Because remember, Celtic have got incredible financial muscle. Should the board wish to go and flex that muscle? Well, they're going to have to, aren't they? Well, it's a hard window, though, Matt. Matt. January is a it, hard window. It is a hard window, window Oz, but you know what? Those, I, I think it's an excuse that's ready made for a club that don't want to go and do anything. Mm. It's still possible to go and strengthen your squad very, yeah. very well yeah. in, uh, in January, particularly when you've got 70 million quid in the bank. So, the onus is on Celtic to go and find the right players to strengthen the squad properly. Derek, we're going to try and answer that question about Celtic. We've got a big Celtic fan with us in the studio, Santino Marchetti, along with his dad, Martino, that many of you may know, huge Celtic supporter. Santino, welcome to the programme. You're in because uh, you paid some money at the John Hartson uh, lunch a couple of weeks ago, so thanks for coming on. Right, what about Derek's question? Is Brendan Rodgers, what was your question? Has he got the stomach for the, for the fight? Mm -hmm. Santino, what do you uh, think? It's always a tricky one to give and say because Rodgers has been, he's been through different things through his whole career, so it's really, really tricky to, to say, but he's been there and done it before as well, so I'd say he's definitely got the, the stomach. It's more, does he have that mentality? Because as when you're, when you're down at the moment, two games on the bounce losing. It's hard. It's sometimes hard to bounce back because people are all at you, expecting this, expecting that. Martino, I think, sorry. sorry, I was going to say to Martino, you've sorry. you've watched them for years and yeah. years. Is there any question? Why would you not have the stomach for it? He's back as as the manager. Absolutely, Paul. He is very calm, collective, and there's no question that he will be successful. His track record, having won seven trophies at a seven, he's only lost one trophy, which is this one that Rangers have picked up. And again, he is well liked at Celtic Park. He will rally the team together and there's no question he will push on from this. The transfer window in January, of course it's key, but the players that he's currently got are an exceptional team. There's no question about that. It's just they're off the boil the last few weeks, which we understand, but they'll get better. No question about that. I think a lot of fans don't understand it, but Derek, you're a Rangers fan. What do you feel? What are you saying about Celtic? What do you think? Uh... I would disagree with you when you say there that a lot of uh, a lot of people like him at Celtic Park. Uh, I don't think it's like Michael Field when he was a Rangers manager. Some people just don't, uh, just aren't watching Brendan, just like they did with Michael Field at Rangers. And that is true, Mark. A lot of Celtic fans has come out now with a couple of difficulties that you know two bad results there, and yet just a few days ago the result against Feyenoord um, yeah. picked up. You know, points there, I know it was late. and But suddenly, there is this, oh, Brendan Rodgers isn't up for it or whatever. The team's not right, is it? The team, it's not his players that have come in. We know about the injuries they've lost. January is going to be big for Celtic. Massive, um, uh, Paul. Uh, to answer uh, Derek's direct question, does Brendan Rodgers have the stomach to fight? I don't have any doubt that he does have the stomach to fight. However, what I would say is, this is the first time... Uh, a Celtic manager, even including his first fill, where he's faced serious adversity um, from the supporters um, because the adversity came when he'd left the building to go to Leicester City. Um, but when he was a Celtic manager first time around, everything was fantastic. They won seven trophies in a row domestically and they left the club in a very good place and, and, and Neil Lennon picked it up and took it on. They took a few tankings uh, in Europe but that's been par for the course for most Celtic managers now in the past decade or so so this is the first time as Celtic manager um, he's faced that the fans actually question him while he's in the seat so he has to help come up with answers too he's had adversity when he was in the job from within because we all know there wasn't a great relationship internally with him and the hierarchy and that played a huge role in him leaving the football club to go to Leicester City which I fully understood why and, and, and I backed his decision to do so at that time. So this is where Brendan, I don't think there's any doubt he's got the stomach for it, but he needs um, he needs help um, as well. And he's got to be 
or he's got to make sure that the club's successful next month in the, in the transfer window. And I, and I think with Brendan, I think the supporters are actually behind him. I just think that they're, they're, they're concerned with the, you know, the, the lack of activity in terms of the transfers coming in. Um, so therefore the board are coming under a little bit of stick for, again, recruitment. We talk about recruitment all the time. It's great when it works well and when it's not, all of a sudden now the last few weeks Celtic have huffed and puffed a little bit. You know, Brendan come out and says that Callum McGregor was, was playing for three people uh, at mm-hmm. the weekend there. Um, so at the moment, like I said, uh, the fans are unhappy, but it's, it seems to me as if it's more with the board than Brendan. Well, the, the, the shouts on Saturday, I wasn't there, sure. but Martino yep. and, Sati- and Santino, where the shouts from the Celtic supporters were against the board, not yep. against um, Brendan Man, Rogers. That, yeah. that was a significant insight. Right, we'll come back to it. We'll go back to Rangers. Derek, you've got the new coffee shop. I'm just going to say to Martino <laughs> and Santino, I take it they're welcome. And you must have been busy today, people in after hangovers and getting some strong coffee. Yeah. Certainly not in the slightest, not for me. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's just gone there. Cheers, Derek. Justin is on the line, a big Rangers fan, whom we last spoke to on the way to Seville. Seems ages ago. Hi, Justin. Hi guys, how you doing? Hi Justin, <laughs> good, thank you. I know you're back in the uh, in recent hours. What are you thinking about it? What a few days for you? Well, if Carlsberg did weeks, there you go. <laughs> that's, all, that's all I would say. Sorry, other beers are available, but uh, that was a week and a half for a number of reasons. Um, not only going to Seville, been in the stadium, and what an atmosphere was there was in the stadium. Um, it was. Phenomenal to watch a Rangers team and a, and a supposed weakened Rangers team. Uh, myself and a couple of friends that were at the game were nervous, let's say, especially with the loss of Cantwell and, and things like that, where the creativity was going to come from. And I've been a, a kind of critic of, of Dessels mm-hmm. since, he's, since he's been with us, but phenomenal. Uh, I feel as if I have to apologise to Dessler. If he is listening, a massive apology from me because he was outstanding on the night. Um, yeah. His touch seemed to appear um, and what a finish for his goal. But just absolutely phenomenal week. Phenomenal week. Greg? Yeah, no, Justin, it was a great week, obviously. Fantastic performance. Uh, Betis obviously not beaten at home uh, all season. So, you know, the performance and the result was a massive one. Um, and for Des as, as well, look, he's he's slowly starting to, to, to show signs. Does he look like a, a 20-plus goal a season striker? For me, still no. Um, big lad, um, I think he, he you know he can bring players into, into the game better with his link-up play, but certainly the, the goal that he scored will give him a lot of confidence. He works hard for the team, uh, but I would still say that this window coming up that Rangers need another striker yeah. uh, and it keeps it, it keeps me going back to Shankland it really does mm-hmm. I think that domestically unbelievable he is a 20 plus mm-hmm. goal a season player um, and, yep. he's, and he's here on our own doorstep Justin so I would like to see Rangers make a play for Shankland what's that part of the deal score against Celtic on the Saturday if Rangers win the cup a bit more <laughs> money in they're going to do the deal <laughs> well <laughs> nice, nice deal if that comes off nice, but he's, he's, yeah. he's linked to both isn't it? because Celtic yeah. also need a, a striker yeah, for sure. we've not touched yeah. on the, the Asian Cup mm-hmm. so you know Celtic are going to be missing players so uh, Mark yeah. you touched on it it's a yeah. really important window for, for Celtic but we'll come to Celtic shortly. We'll give Rangers their moment, Craig. And yep. you, you admit, I mean, how many? There's no point in me asking him how many league cups he won because you two or three. Yeah, two, yeah, two or three, two or three, three at least. I, think. Uh, I can remember. <laughs> <laughs> Justin, I mean, that was quite a thing to you know. After coming back from Seville, then yesterday a cup final. Aberdeen had a big game, of course, on Thursday, but that was at home. Was there jeopardy for you yesterday? I just the last thing you wanted was any excuses, yeah. and I, I think. Both teams looked a wee bit leggy at points. I think they were both running quite high in adrenaline, but um, I, I, I think just Rangers had that bit of extra quality that, that, that managed to do it. And I, I was so proud uh, and so pleased for, for Tav um, not only being able to get the goal, but to, to be able to lift the trophy. He's been under a wee bit of criticism, I think, this season. Mm-hmm to certain sections of the Rangers fans and he keeps coming back with, he's not a shouter, he's not a screamer uh, as a captain, but he leads by example. I've lost count in the amount of times he's popped up 
uh, with crucial goals at crucial times and dealt with the pressure. And it's I, I think the best strike partnership we seem to have at the moment seems to be Barisic and Tav. <laughs> for some reason, the two of them seem to link up better than anybody else. But um, just going on for Craig's point, I, I totally agree with him. I think Shankland is a, is a no-brainer, um, if, if it's at all possible. But two, two of the players I'd love to see in January, one is a Rangers player just now, I'd love to see him coming back as Hadji. I think, you know, he's head and shoulders above Lammers, who, again, just doesn't seem to be clicking no matter what he does. And I think Shankland is, is a no-brainer. Uh, if we're able to get him, it would make so much sense. The one thing I would be curious about, and I'll be keen to ask Craig and the, okay. the guys what their thoughts are, if, if Rangers were, were to get Shankland in mm-hmm. when it was to come, do you think that would mean that Rangers would go for two up top as opposed to a lone striker, as they seem to be doing with Dessels just now? Because Shankland okay. isn't exactly blessed with pace. No, he's would not. You, that's not. It's, you're right. the... it's not his game, is it? Justin, no. good call. We'll answer that in a moment or two. Let's hear Philippe Clement speaking about his captain. Uh, very pleased. Not only for him, but for everybody. But Tef has showed really good quality the uh, last couple of weeks. He's been uh, one of the leaders in the group to push, to, to perform, to be important, to take responsibility in every moment. Never, he's never been hiding when, uh, when we wanted to play. He's been important with assisting goals, so we need to continue that story next couple of months. Jim's been hanging on as well. 08, 08, 17, 17, 700. Justin, don't worry, we're going to answer your question. Jim, Rangers fan, good evening. How are you doing? Uh, good evening, guys. I'm a wee bit hoarse after yesterday. <laughs> yeah. uh, good evening, Mark, Craig, and yourself, Paul. Cheers. Listen, Hi, Jim. I was at a game yesterday, and I was, I was saying to you, the guy who was taking the calls here, yeah. I was actually taken aback. When did this carry on start that the players don't go up these stairs to get a cup? I thought it was yeah. hang me. I thought it was a wee bit kind of hang me. I was actually taken aback. I know I've not been here for twelve years, huh? or whatever it was the last time we won it. But I'm a traditionalist. I think the players should be going up the stairs to get that cup. Yeah. No one apart, by the way, off a podium. You know, the off the ground couldn't even see getting presented. Great question. Yeah, nah, top, top one again. I just remember growing up as a kid and you're watching yeah. cup finals and, yeah. and and walking up the stairs and seeing the the, the skipper of either team lift that trophy and. Um, share share that that memory with the supporters and all that. Um, look, there's a lot of things unfortunately that are kind of getting away from us in, in football. And uh, I agree, Jim. Mate. I would love to see the you know the walking up uh, and lifting the trophy uh, the, the way that it used to be. But change, change. There's too many changes yeah. in football now. Yeah, Plus, I think it's right because you, you know a lot of this, the fans can't see it when it's on yeah. the podium because they're kind of backs to a big section of the, yeah. of the ground. So do both. You know, got the traditional way up the stairs. Get your trophy from the, from the dignitaries, put it on show there, right in the main stand behind the dugouts, which is the focal point of Hamden. Then go down onto the podium for the official yeah, f- it's f- pictures photographs when you're all together and all the other members of yep. staff who don't get a medal can then get involved and then you do the, the, the lap on. It should be straightforward and I agree with Jim, it's the kind of thing that shouldn't be messed about with. And he's a good line there, he's not used to going to cup finals, <laughs> although Angels were there, you know, just what, two seasons ago. Santino, you've been to so many of them. They always went up the stairs, didn't they? Yeah, for me, it's, it's an iconic moment when they yeah. walk up those stairs yeah. and you see so many pictures, videos of them lifting it together and there's so many iconic moments created through it. Like it was when, obviously, when we won our first treble with, under Rogers, it was incredible, just everybody up the stairs and then they just lifting it. Incredible for me because it's like you're right in amongst the fans, everybody's involved, all together celebrating. Unbelievable. Centeno, yellow card, it took you 10 minutes to mention a treble. <laughs> I thought as a Celtic <laughs> fan, with Rangers winning yesterday, Celtic losing at the weekend, you'd be, um, you'd, you'd say that sooner. It's true. Jim had a really good point there. What about the point earlier from Justin? About well, Shankland? Uh, yeah, will they play two up top, would he? Oh, look, I, I, I certainly uh, think that Shankland is, is probably best uh, with a with another striker. Um, you know, he, he's he, his game is he's matured a lot. You know, he likes to drop into to those deeper areas. Uh, but as a lone striker, and I think the expectation uh, now in terms of the you know the, the pressing and and that kind of thing, he would definitely be suited uh, with a with a second striker. I think, Mark. It's good enough to go and play for Rangers, Paul. Whether it's in a one or, or yeah. as a two, he has matured. He drops deep. He holds the ball up really well. His game awareness is terrific. But most importantly, he can score a goal. There is, again, it's been a very clever, well worked set play from Hearts on Saturday. Get, let's give credit to them for that. They've put the block in and he peels away to the back post. And what a finish. How's he getting that space, though? Yeah, well, listen, it's poor defending. However, you've got to give the, the striker credit for tucking yeah. it away past Joe Hart. 
he had a very good finish as well ahead of the eyebrows um, not so long ago so he's a he's a he's a top striker in our domestic terms um, whether it's Rangers whether it's Celtic Celtic have got striking uh, issues as well that they need to address very very quickly um, he can he can go and do it I'd have no doubts whether he plays for Rangers or played for Celtic um, he would get minimum 20 goals if he if he was getting a sufficient number of games yeah yeah and, wow. and look that's, that's yeah. the thing to win a title you need three or four strikers um, and, and you, you know you can never have enough goals within the team so that's like Shanklin and Shanklin yeah. is an out and out goal scorer mm-hmm. you know with Danilo I know he's picked up the injury and all that sort of stuff but the, the 1-0 result against Hearts there's a couple of chances where he wanted to take the extra touch and I was just thinking back to the days of Ali McCoist out, out and out goal scorer you don't need that extra touch if you're a goal scorer, you're a goal scorer, bang. Uh, and, and Shanklin has got that. And, you know, Sh- Shanklin, to be fair, at hearts can be starved of opportunity, but he'll get one chance in a match and he'll score. 13 goals so far this season, and we will talk about the Celtic defence and what's going wrong at Celtic after the break. But it's Rangers Day today. They've won the first of the three domestic trophies this season. And also, with what happened on Saturday, if, if they win the two games, it's an if, but if they do, they would be top of the table. So... The Derby, the Glasgow Derby, the Old Firm Derby, call it whatever you will, it's going to be some day, Mark, isn't it? It's not Judgment Oof. Day, but it, well, there's a bit of judgment going on, for sure. Oof, half yeah. past twelve, December the 30th, Saturday. Yeah. Many sleeps to go, was, was oh. it? Oh. <laughs> 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 twelve, was it? Twelve sleeps to go? Yep. It'll be a belter, an yeah. absolute belter. Here's a message from Philippe Clement after winning the trophy yesterday. This happiness that they see also that the players really want. I know the synergy was a bit gone not so long time ago. I hope this gives also some credit for the difficult moments that will come in the season and in these moments that uh, the fans stick behind the players because I can promise one thing, it will always be players on the pitch who have been working hard during the week. So that promise I can make. And if they push the team uh, through the the difficult moments, we can do extra things than, uh, than in a normal situation. The Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. Tailored and renewable energy products to suit your commercial and domestic needs. Let's go! It's the Go Radio Football Show, the Monday evening edition. Paul Cooney with Craig Moore, who was out celebrating last night, as you would expect, a Rangers legend. Rangers winning the League Cup, the Viaplay Cup, 1-0 against Aberdeen. The goal coming in 75 minutes. James Tavin, a good cross down the left by Borna Barisic. And it was some strike, wasn't it? It was quite an, uh, acrobatic, wasn't it? Very, yeah. very. Look, there was yeah. there was a lot to be done. There was, yeah. you know, for sure. Tavani executed. Uh, could the goalkeeper have done better, possibly? But look, yeah. to, to execute the way that Tav did, uh, you t- you touched on Paul the fullbacks, uh, you know, from one side to, to the next. But one thing that Tav does well is he, he gets into the to the box and. You know, people have focused at times defensively, but I tell you what, his his output in terms of goals and assists um, has been incredible. Clement come out and, and, and praised his, his captain in terms of the leadership role that he's taken in in, in recent weeks. So, uh, look, a great match for him and a great goal to cap off. It was a really good performance. Let's hear from Brendan Rodgers then. That was the shock on Saturday, wasn't it? Two 0 to Hearts at Celtic Park. This was Brendan Rodgers after the game. Well, firstly, I want to apologise to the the support base because. Um, I don't think I've ever had to, to do that with regards to performance, but today they, they deserve that. You know, you're, you're mid-December, you get 60-odd thousand here, and the lack of desire and passion to and, and what was what was just really, really poor. Um, so I think it's... And it wasn't the whole team. You know, Callum McGregor was absolutely brilliant today, trying to drive the team on, um, one or two others. But, um, but I think the biggest aspect of it it's just that consistency and mentality you know we we, we win a game during the week um, we, we played some really good football at times this season but there's a there's a mentality that uh, you need to have consistently and uh, sadly we, we didn't have that from the off Mark remarkable yeah um, I mean I, I didn't see that result um, coming Paul you know Celtic when you look at their record in, in recent years and going back to when Brendan came in, they very rarely lose a, a game. But you look at it now, Path, I remember saying from the start of last season when the two managers were Ange Postecoglou and Giovanni Van Bronckhorst, I thought such will be the level of consistency. It's going to be 100 points to, to win the title. Now, looking at it, 90 might win you. 91, 92, um, just about the, the level of drop points already and we're almost at the halfway 
Um, stage, but Celtic need to get their act together. Um, it's not good enough. Uh, the manager, the players, uh, the board, the recruitment, it needs to be better. I also think the Celtic supporters need to be better. Uh, in the absence of the Green Brigade, they need to go and generate an atmosphere and, and help. I mean, the Green Brigade aren't there anymore, uh, Paul, but there's still 55,000 of them in the stadium and they're not capable of backing the team, of trying to stimulate something as well onto the pitch. I know it cuts both ways. And Santino and Martino are there um, every other week but I think that's something that, that needs to be addressed that the Celtic fans can make a contribute apart from financially where they're outstanding um, there is no doubt about that but on a Saturday like a game like, like there they've got to they've got to do their bit a bit more as well I would say Martino it's a long time since you've heard that kind of criticism about you know but the club divided and the fans not as, as loud and as for the team as they normally would be Listen, you might say that. I mean, I know where we sit, we're very enthusiastic. And always oh, it is just disappointing performances. Certainly the last two league games, we have been disappointing. But people are kind of focusing on Celtic and the way that they played. Yeah, they weren't brilliant, absolutely. The reality is Hearts for me played very, very well. OK, we can play better, but the reality is Hearts played very well. And that coupled with a slight poor performance for me made it worse. But the reality, there's not a lot in it. You know, from moving forward with Rangers as well, we're, we're neck and neck at the moment. We're not behind Rangers. I do believe we do have a better squad. And I think we will certainly strengthen in January time. No question about that. It just depends what we get in. And I think there's still a little bit of issue with regards to the change of the type of play. Previously, mm -hmm. We played this very attacking type football under Ange Pozdokoglu. We're a little bit more methodical now. We are slower. A lot of people don't particularly like it. It's maybe not as exciting as it was under Ange Pozdokoglu. But that's the system that we're playing. And I think we will get better as we start working together. That's my, my thought process. Santino, you were there. You're here on the show, having generously given money to the John Hartson Foundation a couple of weeks ago. What do you feel as a Celtic fan? What's going wrong at, wrong at the moment? Uh, there's, a, there's a couple. You, you could say there's a few things. Obviously picked up some unfortunate injuries. There's yeah. quite a few there. But I still don't think that really makes up for the performance that we've had the last two weeks. Obviously we had the midweek game against Feyenoord. was... But I went in the atmosphere was absolutely fantastic for me when Lackaby scores that goal. You think, from my, in my head, I thought we were going to push on and get a performance. But as, as my dad obviously just said there as well, in that game against Hearts, we did we were on top of them looking at it from a, a static a yep. stats point of view. Possession-wise, shots on target and everything else. It might not look like that on the day, but Hearts were just slightly bit more clinical. Um, for me, as I'll echo what my dad says, well, January is going to be quite massive with recruitment. Because for me, when you look at the squad list, there's so many players there that are not being used, and we probably need to get rid of a few and replace them. That's what no I mean. To the players. Why do you think he played Mikey Johnson, for example? Uh, why did he start with him on Saturday? For given me, it's not been working out for him. No harm to him. Time to go. Why would you, in a game against Hearts? when you've lost the week before, start with, for example, Mikey Johnson? I think, to be honest, everyone's been pretty harsh on him, if I'm being honest, because he, he ha the last couple of games he has been played, played fairly all right, and he's mm. been a bit of a bright spark. You know when he's got the ball at his feet one-on-one, -on -one, something will happen, but it just never fell his way that day. But I feel everyone was just jumping on his back, because Mikey Johnson in the past has always been known as takes too long on the ball, not moving it quick enough, and his performance haven't been up to scratch. So they just kind of jumped back to that narrative. Because when I saw when Maeda came on, Maeda made a few mistakes. No one's jumping on his back. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I know Maeda made, made a decent name for himself and he's done really, really well. But why is that stigma not the same when it's, he's doing the same type, type of errors? But I, th I still feel Mikey Johnson deserved to start. And if, if he wasn't, you'd be a bit like, OK, the only one you could say Maeda ahead of him, but at the same time, he's only just came back from injury. So And Kyogo, is, he's not getting the supply he used to get. Yang's no. not giving it. Or uh, even Palma. Yeah. Palma looks to be trying to score himself rather than maybe supplying... The, the top scorer last season? Yeah, I mean, if you want to um, you know, look at the, the, the points you're making about whether it's Maida and, and Mikey Johnson or, or Palma or, 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 or Yang or whoever's coming into the team, so you, you assess it and Kyogo's not the player that he was. Now, maybe Kyogo's still not the player that he was. Maybe he's still a wee bit timid after that real clatter that he got. Was it the Aberdeen game? Um, can you look at that goal or that chance that he had on, on Saturday? He'd normally be putting that away with his eyes shut. So is there a part of him that's still feeling the after effects of that real bad one that he took um, at Celtic Park a month or so ago. That said, Paul, if you want to draw a, a comparison 
uh, to last season and Martino's mentioned that the, the style of playing Santino said it's not as quick as what it used to be under Postacoglu but it's maybe no surprise that the team isn't as good as what it was last season because you've lost Jota on the left and because of injury you've lost a badder mm. so I don't know off the top of my head but between the two of them last season how many assists and how many goals did they have it'd be a frightening amount you then take that with Kyogo going off the ball in the last 8, 9, 10 games so when the badder comes back you should see a difference um, right away but when he's back how quickly he can get up to speed so when you're you're weakening your team like that with two major players that are match winners is it any surprise that Celtic find themselves sometimes in the position that they're in I, I think look, we, can, we can talk about formations we can talk about individual players for me the most concerning thing that um, Brendan has said is, is the lack of desire mm. and, and hunger because it, it kind of takes me back to the back end of Michael Beale's time at Rangers, and, and that were there were things that I was kind of throwing that you know that desire, that hunger, yeah. the basics. So so Brendan at this moment in time is asking for Celtic to deliver the basics, let alone then go on and, and put in performances. So for me that was yeah, it's not a concern for me obviously because I'm the, the blue side, but it's <laughs> like you know when when you've got the manager saying that, that for me as a supporter is a concern. Here's what he was saying afterwards. No, listen, you do your talking on the pitch. And uh, and today was on on myself and, and the players. You uh, today was nowhere near the level of a Celtic player, and uh, and that's something that that falls on me. So I need to uh, to find the answers for this uh, for this group. And uh, like I say, it's um, it's trying to ensure we we can gain that consistency in the team. And he spoke about the mentality. For so long, the hallmark of Celtic was to go, go. They never stopped last season. Yeah, it's 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 mentality. It's 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 an ambition and a drive from within, uh, and a spirit that that keeps pushing you. Like I said, you get guys like Callum McGregor, who has this incredible mindset, and you see him today. He's having to play two, three positions to uh, uh, in order to to look to get the team going in the game. Um, that's something that comes from uh, from within, and um, we uh, we need to we need to activate that. Let's go on the line. Another Celtic fan is on. Paul and Kirk and Tell. Good evening, Paul. Yeah, hi, Paul. How are you doing? Hi, guys. Good. Hi, thank you. Hi, yeah. So, what are you thinking there? What are you thinking on your team? Uh, I kind of felt I think I phoned up on Thursday, yeah. uh, and I I gave you my concerns that I don't think Brendan Rodgers is the man, and the, I think the guy they call after me says that who is the man and that just he can approve of it that to me on Saturday wasn't a surprise to be honest uh, his management style now it's not working I mean that's Derek McInnes got the better of him twice uh, people they're no, there's no fear factor coming to Celtic partner uh, I was at oh, uh, I was at the Feyenoord game Feyenoord are a great team yeah. if, if they had the shooting boots on they, they would have won you know, uh, we've been rubbish all season. I, I mean, the, the only game that I think we played decent was against Aberdeen. But we've been, even when we won at Ibrox, two goals chopped off, we rode our luck. He's, um, I, I just, I think, I don't think he's the, the elite manager that everybody thinks he is. And there's no as many people behind him as you think. Uh, I was I was at the game Saturday uh, and I saw the fact the board stuff and yeah. that and you know, I mean, I'm not, I was part of the kind of the first sack of the board when we were, we were really on our knees kind of thing. But so this is just this is nothing compared to that. Uh, we've got a generation I kind of been brought up in a different era. I was so yeah. I don't think this is a major thing. But I don't think Brendan Rodgers is the man. I hope I'm wrong, but I've saw not one but I evidence this season that he is the man. Okay. He takes the blame for nothing. Uh, after the Atletico Madrid game, he chucked the players under the bus and now he's trying to win it back. But he should never have been allowed back in the door and I hope he goes soon. Well, Paul, hold on, stay on. This is what he said, though, um, about it being his responsibility, the result on Saturday. No, look, listen, I think it's one that it's always hard after a game. Um, I think the, the, the performance level was, was nowhere near. And I'd take responsibility for that because I, I picked the team uh, to go out and, uh, and perform. Uh, so the result is uh, is on me, but um, but at a club like this here, you you need that consistent mentality. 
because every game there's an expectation to win. And we're playing here, like I said, in front of a full house, an expectant crowd after the, uh, the weekend, and we didn't perform, and, um, and that sadly uh, disappoints me. Martino, what would you say? I, I saw your uh, eyebrow go up when Paul felt Feyenoord are not that great. I can tell you just now, Feyenoord were a, absolutely, for me, unbelievable, an incredible team, very quick, very very good movement. I would actually say they were probably slightly better than Celtic um, on the evening. Celtic were just, for me, a little bit more clinical, um, but it was a fantastic result. There's no question about it. It's Champions League. It's a different level altogether. And as far as Brendan Rodgers is concerned, of course, it's disappointing you know, when he came back, did we have reservations? Of course we did. But as the time went on, the reality is he knew the club. And I would say the vast majority of people bought into that and thought at least he knows it'll get, hopefully hit the ground running. He has hit the ground running. There has been a dip in for him. There is no question about that over the last probably three or four weeks. That will only get better as far as I'm concerned. Just Sant get better. Yeah, Santino, do you feel that he is going to... What's he going to do to make it better? Players coming back will help. But energy levels... You know, the mentality, that surely should be there for every member of the squad. I think when you call it out like that as well, it's now time for the players to now go on and kick on from that and maybe give them a kick in the right direction that they need. Like he talks about Cal McGregor's mentality. Obviously, after the game on Saturday, he grabbed all the players together, got them in a huddle and had a chat with them himself, which for me shows great leadership because they need to leave something like that. And even like my dad and myself, we, for me, we are not like the type to kind of boo, even after a bad performance. But you stay out and you clap your team. At the end of the day, they're your team and you need to make sure you support them all the way. You need to be there through the good times and the bad times. But as I said, it's now for the players to step up. Mark, can they step up? For example, Joe Hart's done well, <coughs> Abe done loads well. Yeah. But, you know, a free kick from, what, 27 yards out and it beats them. Yeah, I mean, the first one I'd say I thought it was a terrific free kick from Stephen Chingley, so I would credit him there. And Joe Hart, Paul, has been a, a target um, for disgruntled, disgruntled Celtic fans for a number of months. Um, I think the goalkeeping position needs to be looked at, but I don't think it's a priority for, for January. Listen, if somebody sensational becomes available, you think, OK, he can be a goalie for the next three or four seasons, then, yeah, go and go and do the deal but if it's the difference between spending 6 million quid on a goalie or spending 6 million quid on a striker or a centre mid I would go and get those other guys before I would replace uh, Joe Hart um, so I, I would I would knock that one um, right away um, if Celtic can't beat Livingston on Saturday Paul there is clearly a serious problem so let's see where Celtic are at 5 o'clock on Saturday afternoon I'm not saying if they beat Livingston everything's great again because it's not however if they can't yeah, sure. beat Livingston, and I'm not saying lose the game, even if they draw, there's a serious, serious problem. And where it starts and where it ends, we don't know, but ultimately it's down to the players on the pitch if they can't beat Livingston on Saturday. Paul? Hey, uh, sorry, the, the, the guys is on the show. I'm just want to ask, see, since Brendan Rodgers has come in, can you tell me any player that's improved? Apart from maybe Matt O'Reilly, and let's face it, we were lucky with William Scales. Because uh, that was a flip, to be honest. Because he would, he wouldn't get a look in if uh, if it went the way it went. He's not no players improved. He, every player's yeah. improved, have not back to me. Liam Scales it, has improved, it, Paul. So you're you're, you're no, choosing, no, no, no. yeah, but you're choosing. You're saying it was a flip to, to suit your argument. Um, what is I think Matt O'Reilly's improved um, compared to to last season. But that apart, yeah, there, there's a few players that just aren't going to have the. Have they hit the wall? Was the energy levels that they had to produce under Ange for two years at 60, 65 games a season maybe taking its toll? Are we underestimating losing the, 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 the ability of, of Abada uh, and Maida not having a settled central defensive partnership? Alistair Johnson doesn't look the player that he was last season. I don't think he got a proper pre-season unless I'm mistaken. So there's a lot of different factors. For me, maybe the biggest thing about Brendan Rodgers would be that... And it's a, a very, um, it's a hard lesson that he's learned. I think Brendan Rodgers, maybe, and I don't know, he'd need to be asked, but I suspect that he too readily accepted um, the the transfer structure in the summer and wasn't hands on enough or didn't fight his corner enough, whatever of the two. Because I'd like to think that Brendan Rodgers wouldn't have been happy with the, the transfer action in the summer but he's maybe thought the squad's good winning mentality we can be fine we can still go and win the league despite the fact that I'm not in full control of the transfer policy 
he needs to get a grip of that and it needs to be better in January otherwise it could eventually cost him his job Greg uh, and just just quickly uh, look Brendan Rodgers touched on, on Callum McGregor who's a wonderful captain and, and fantastic player but any team you can't be three potentially three players down uh, which is kind of what he was saying you know it doesn't matter what team you are if you go into a match three players down you're losing a game of football and players who tortured you you being Rangers I remember Barry here in the live games the Abadas the Jotas yeah, yeah. and you and you know, big players yeah, big players big, and big moments okay thanks for the calls the Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy for your free energy home survey and a bespoke quote call 0800 233 5788 let's go Global Eco Energy sell and install renewable energy products to domestic, commercial, and public sector customers. With access to a wide range of renewable energy products, including solar PV, battery storage, air source heat pumps, and eco garden makeovers, we offer a bespoke service tailored to your exact needs. For a free quote and to find out more about grants and funding options, go to global eco.co.uk. The Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. Tailored and renewable energy products to suit your commercial and domestic needs. Let's go! This time tomorrow night on the programme by popular demand, Mark Weedy is back with us along with John Hartson. <laughs> Big bad John Hartson. We're going to talk Rangers because it's Rangers who've got the first trophy of the season. And is that a moment Celtic had all three last season? Season before, they had two out of the three and it kicked off under Ange Postacoglu with uh, well League Cup win two years ago. Rangers have won yesterday. Craig Moore, did you have a late night and why not? Was it quite late last night? For me, it was yeah. very late, yeah. uh, Paul. Certainly not getting uh, any younger. Uh, but again, like I said, it was a good good opportunity to go out and, and, and have a couple of drinks. Um, I'm sure the players um, also had the opportunity to let their hair down a little bit. Um, but nothing too crazy because the schedule now at this time of year... Yeah. You know, but I, I think in in your career, Paul, it, it is really important. When I look back at my career and all that sort of stuff, you know, the big moments, winning trophies, you have got to go and enjoy yourself uh, because their memories that last last forever. Martino, do you remember him playing well against you? Uh, you being Celtic, he, 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 yes. like playing but not well. Yeah, no. Listen, of course, <laughs> yeah. Greg, an outstanding player. It was a frustrating time. I actually, did a bit of work at Celtic Park at that particular time, and it was uh, unpleasant. That's all I can <laughs> say. And it just took. Yeah. You know, we did get used to losing all the time. We forget, as Celtic fans, we're actually in Nirvana at the moment, although it's bad at the moment. Two results, but trust me, go back 20 years, that was what was unpleasant. Not now. But young people don't remember that. But what we do well, remember is you were in charge of the press store. Correct. And you were very good to so many of us, including Mark Weedy, his fine as the chief writer there at the Sunday was, Mail. Yeah. Did he ask yeah. you for the points to help him fill in? You know, how did they do? <laughs> Who will they give eight to or whatever? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. He was always asking for players and everything like that. And I'm, I'm glad you said players and no pies. <laughs> <laughs> it was players. And it was always very creative to get players to come to the media. I, yeah. I would normally kind of manipulate them slightly or say they've won player of the match and say you're getting a Rolex watch today. <laughs> so they would come along because a lot of the time they didn't want to speak to anybody and it was it wasn't easy it wasn't easy <laughs> yeah you're some man Santino is with you so the John Hartson day was it how much did you enjoy it big fundraising day yeah it was good yeah. fun a great day out and, uh, obviously for a great cause so I can't even say any more to, to, towards yeah. that but it was a great 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 charity and everything that goes along with it it's incredible so always happy to help out and support yeah. any means so Yep, he will be here tomorrow night, so we will pass on your best to him. So it's uh, Rangers who, they woke up with some sore heads, some of the Rangers fans. Barry's not in tonight, is that part of it? No, I think oh. he had a scheduled something on at the house, but he'll be back on Wednesday night. This is Philippe Clement, who was saying, yeah, winning the cup is really, really special, and he wants to see hunger from his players to win more. If you have satisfaction one moment, and you're happy with how the things are, you go down. So... That's what I want to see in next weeks, next months. This hunger, this desire to, to be better, to have more, to work hard, to be in the team, to be competitive. Um, and also this, this team mentality that's in the dressing room now. I didn't see this week one player who was disappointed that he didn't start. Everybody was um, supporting the team. Everybody was ready also when they came in. If, we, if the players keep that mentality until end of the season, you always have a great season. So I'm going to push really hard towards that. And if there are players with other ideas, 
they put themselves out of the story. And Mark, if I'd said to you a few weeks ago, man of the match in the cup final will be Dujon Sterling, you would say, no chance. But he did so well yesterday. <clears throat> Yeah, he, he he did, and uh, you know he played a, an important role as well on uh, Thursday night yep. um, mm-hmm. in Seville. You know, playing that that position, um, which isn't his best position. But I remember when he signed, Paul spoke to Jonathan Gould, who'd worked with him at Stoke. Jonathan was a goalkeeping coach um, at Stoke, and he said, and I, and I said it on this program. Jonathan said that he's got outstanding pace, mm-hmm. wonderful pace, best position certainly when he was at Stoke and then he went out in loan was right side of a three, right side of a back three. Um, but for, for for Rangers and, and again you've got to uh, credit the much maligned Michael Beale because yeah. some of the signings are coming good um, just want in time for him um, is that um, they got for nothing Paul so it's good work you know it's about having contacts it's about selling um, what you're doing obviously a lucrative uh, contract helps as well but um, still in I haven't uh, researched him I thought no that's a good signing for Rangers he's been very very unfortunate uh, with injury but he will be a good player for the club. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, and, and as you say, you know, playing in a position that is not his his favoured uh, position, uh, and and due to, to injuries, there's been an opportunity that's provided. But he's come in and he's he's taken that. And look, what what he gives you in the middle of the park is obviously energy, the ability to cover the grass, to go and compete, um, and then that way you sort of like can can gain control of of a match. You, you you know, the midfield areas are so important in terms of. Um, you win that battle, and then you've got the opportunity to grow into the the, the game. But he's done really, really well. Um, but again, it's taking opportunities. It's a little bit like when you talk about Liam Scales at, at Celtic this season. It's about football players have got to take opportunities, Paul. Um, and it's and it's great when you see these players do that. Can I throw a couple of names at you? Yes. Leon Balligan, what a fine young player. <laughs> Where's he come from? By the from? way, and I thought I Balligan mean, was probably one of the best at the weekend. Yeah, I know yeah. you're talking about Sterling, man of the match, but. Um, Balogun got yeah. tested early doors because Aberdeen were quite direct, um, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. and he's not the quickest, but he, he managed to, to to get back, and that was early in the game, Paul. And all of a sudden, again, he's he, he yeah. grew in confidence. But young player, eh? young player. <laughs> it's, it's, it's amazing, amazing. great experience. experience. They could be always slaughtered when they brought he him was, back. Exactly, slaughtered for bringing him back. Have yeah. Yeah. Transfer. Isn't football crazy? This time last year, Rangers had a new manager, and it was Michael Beale. And uh, he started really well. He couldn't beat Celtic. That was the problem. Couldn't win the biggest games. Philippe Clement has. He's the new manager today at uh, Sunderland. So good to see Michael Beale back in football at a good level. Yeah, no, I'm obviously pleased for, for Michael Beale. You know, it's um, first and foremost. You know, they're, they're human. So yeah. you know, they, they sack and lose their jobs. Okay, that's that's part of the business. But uh, he's got another wonderful opportunity. Sunderland, oh, big club. Yeah. Nowhere massive, near as big as Newcastle. Club. Yeah, squeegee. Of course. <laughs> sure. of course. No, but you know, like it's, it's a big, big job. But Paul, let's see what he's learnt from his time at Rangers because his biggest problem, I felt was talking too much. Yes. But from Absolutely. the media point of view, it was brilliant. That was great for us. Yeah. Great for us. But what are you doing now? You're in the media. <laughs> no, but you know what I'm saying? Look, like, sure, you gotta, yeah. sometimes you've got yeah. to keep a little bit for yourself. Yeah, and the mentality of the Sunderland yeah. fans very similar to Rangers yeah. in terms of, you know, real football yeah. and mm. football uh, City tie. absolutely yeah. mad um, for it there. So, yeah, you're right. He'll need to be careful and make sure his messaging is on point because they, they don't suffer fools gladly in Sunderland, mm. Sunderland either. John Lundstrom, it looks as though there could be a new contract for him soon. And what about Borna Remember a year ago, th- people thought he'd said cheerio. He was waving, yeah. Well, he's one of the best players yesterday. Is he going to stay? New contract? Yeah, so, you know what? It's a tough one. Um, because he's at an age now where, like I said, that there might be that, on a free, there might be that money move for him. Uh, or, or Rangers make a decision. And, and those decisions need to be really made already. Ross McCausland yeah. at the other end. Yeah, again, yeah. sometimes you just need that, that a little bit of youth, uh, enthusiasm, uh, energy. And he's come in and... Uh, again, it's probably been at a time when Rangers needed that kickstart because they haven't been been flashy. Uh, but he's come in and he's done extremely well. He has a couple of chances at the back post, but he's not he's not really a, a threat in the air. Uh, but again, great energy and more importantly, good to see younger players getting the opportunity. Yeah. And Santino saying no penalty yesterday at the cup final. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. It's one of those ones where every angle you look at it is. I don't know, it's hard to say, but... <laughs> I made that bet up. Uh, there you go, of course. Of course. <laughs> it's that, of course, Celtic are also getting loads of penalties just now. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> the news is coming up soon. Santino, where do you feel now? Obviously, there's two really hot topics. Rangers winning the first silverware, Celtic losing two in a row. Because, you know, the manager gave them a rollicking. That was only two weeks ago. It's it's St. Johnson Johnston, yeah. got a good second half out of them. What, is that it? The next game, it's not the energy levels. It's not that intensity you would expect. So what would you say 
about your team? Uh, I think there's more to come from us for sure. Yeah. Like that, you get dips throughout the whole season. Obviously, this is a, a bit of a, a wee bit of a blip. Obviously, two losses on the bounce, losing two now at home, not ideal. But always can come back. We've strength to strength. It's always going to be these kind of moments kind of define you in the season. Can you bounce back from it? And we'll see you on the next game on Saturday if we can come. That's the thing. It's obviously playing against Livingston, expected to win, but it's about the performance level and the intensity and everything. Is that all there? And getting the game over the line. So. Martino, you haven't changed over the years. Great to see you back in the studio. But I heard what Thank you were you. saying. You know, and uh, you've seen much worse days. Celtic are top of the league, five points ahead. I know Rangers have two games in hand. St. Johnson midweek Wednesday, I think. What would you say? What's your final think? Uh, think your final thought on final, Celtic. My final yep. thought. Yep. Um, Celtic will win on the 30th of December Oof. without question they have to be better and it will be yeah. they will be better and it will be 2-1 to Celtic that's mm. that's my thought process I do think they'll win I actually didn't feel confident uh, before the Hearts game I was a bit worried about Rangers at, on the, at the end of December but now I'm actually more com- more confident without question they might sound crazy right yeah, but yeah. I do I think there's less pressure on them fans are you know it was the same game at Ibrox if, if I'm being honest I would say most Celtic fans expected us to lose that game mm-hmm. at Ibrox and when we won it it was kind of like my goodness that was yeah. a bit of a surprise sure. and I think again takes a little bit of pressure off them and they are a good side but listen it's football it's unpredictable we don't know where it's going to take us so but I'm hoping they win <laughs> And your contributions tonight, that means more money for the Beatson because you Absolutely. promoted and helped John Hartson's charity. Absolutely. Martino, F- fabulous thank charity. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Santino. Thank you. George. See you again maybe thanks, after guys. December Cheers, 30th. Cheers, News is next and then we're back with Santino and Martino. Craig, you can go. So can you, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> and me. <laughs> The Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. Design your bespoke solar PV system and meet your energy needs with no upfront costs. Let's go! Well, it's been quite some weekend in Scottish football. It kicked off three o'clock on Saturday with uh, St. Mirren and Motherwell nil nil. So. Is that 14 games, 15 games without a win for Motherwell? But it wasn't a, a loss, so they picked up a point against St Mirren, whose home record, they've only been beaten, what, once? And that was uh, Rangers this season. St Johnson won nil against Hibs. Maybe a surprise. Graham Carey getting the goal. Just his second of the season. Ross County nil, Dundee won. But that was one of the headlines, not for the game itself. Although Shaughnessy, or Shaughnessy as they say on the beat, 90 plus 7 was when the goal came in. And then Derek Adams wow. got everyone... Yeah, he said it was rubbish. Uh, he's come from the fourth tier in England where the football's 100, 100 times, times better. better than here. Wow. So we'll talk about that. <laughs> what do you think? We'll move on. If we were Radio Ross County, we'd certainly be going on about it and demanding uh, action for that. I mean, come on. It's a Gerald Ratner moment where you've just said the product is terrible and look what happened to his company. If not, Google it and find out. Livingston, if you don't remember it, Livingston nil, Kilmarnock nil, and of course, Hearts winning 2-0 against Celtic. Shankland header in uh, 13, his 13th of the season. Where was the defence? And Stephen Kingsley, what a free kick from 27 yards. On the line now is, uh, and then yesterday, of course, we are talking just before, Rangers winning the Viaplay League Cup. James Tavernier getting the goal that counted. Let's go on the lines and Laurie is on. Good evening, Laurie. Hey, Paul, good evening. Good evening, panel. Paul, uh, I'd like to preface my comments about football-related matters yep. uh, before I talk about those, because yep. certain things are more important than football. Sure. And I would like to thank from the bottom of my heart, as a cancer survivor, uh, the Marquettis for their generosity. Oh. Thanks a million, guys, and supporting John Hartson's foundation. Wonderful. Thank you. They'll be listening. They've just gone in the car. They made quite an impression in here. So thank you. That's really good. Martino and Santino. Thank well, you very, very much. Well, it's very up close and yeah. personal for, for of me, of course, Paul. Yes. But uh, let, let me move on now. Uh, Mark, uh, can I ask you a question? Yes, This is something I've been unable to ascertain. Celtic recruited eight or nine acquisitions in the summer. Mm-hmm. Uh, most of them haven't featured for various reasons in the first team. Admittedly, you can't legislate against injuries. Here's my question, Mark. To your knowledge, big man, uh, as an erudite journalist and a veritable authority on football matters, do you have any understanding of those nine signings to what extent Brendan was involved uh, with the sign prior to his arrival or not? Mark, uh, I, I suspect... 
Laurie, and, and I, I, I genuinely don't know factually. Only Brendan Rodgers could, could really answer the question, but my suspicion would be that he inherited... I, I, I don't know if you heard me. I made the point about 10, 15 minutes ago that uh, I think maybe Brendan... Um, and again, I suspect maybe felt that with the benefit of hindsight, he's not exerted himself enough uh, on the transfer uh, situation during the summer. Um, he's kind of, if you like, one of a better situation, maybe gone with the flow, or he has um, railed against some of the signings, but it's fallen on deaf ears. So either way, it's something that he has to sort out for the next window, or else it could cost him um, his job. But I would imagine... That Brendan Rodgers would, if he said he needed four players, um, um, would rather have spent twenty million quid on four players than twenty million pound on ten players. I suspect that's the way that Brendan Rodgers would have would have looked. Go and get me players that can come in and make an immediate impact, rather than six or seven who are here to 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 go and try and maybe do something a couple of years down the line. It's all about the here um, and now. So I suspect that's been. The situation. Do you feel a bit, guys, as though his era, second time round, hasn't really started? He hasn't. They're not his players. Yeah, that, he needs to go and do, do yeah, something sure. about it. But he, he didn't bring any staff with him. You know, mm-hmm. ironically, Chris Davis, who was his long-time trusted number two, mm-hmm. joined Ange Postecoglou yeah. um, at Tottenham. So, is that an area you might think maybe I need somebody fresh? Maybe I need something a wee bit different um, on, on on my backroom staff. Um, does he want his own? Scouting person and he certainly wants his own players in. Of mm. that, there is no doubt, and, and rightly so. And, and I don't think the manager should ever be undermined. Let's say, what is the point of Dermot Desmond pushing the boat out to bring back Brendan Rodgers if you're not going to back him? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't add up for a football club not to give the manager what he wants. So, from a Celtic point of view, I don't know if you agree, Laurie, but you'd have to say that um, lessons need to be learned from what happened in August and not repeat the mistakes in January. Give the manager full control of the football department and what happens of the ins and outs. If there's a budget there, let the manager control how the budget is used. If anybody else is controlling that situation within the football club, then they're on the road to nowhere. Laurie? Well, uh, Paul, I agree entirely with Mark and I think I'd enlarge on that because it didn't escape my notice that Celtic I were £25 million pound richer yeah. with the sale of Jota to the Saudi Arabian team. Yeah. I also didn't escape my notice that the nine signings that were acquired during the close season, uh, July, so August, collectively cost £14 million. Pounds. Now, I remember phoning a programme at the start of the season, Paul, and theoretically and in principle, I said to myself, you know what, uh, this is wonderful because these young guys, mostly in their early 20s or late teens, uh, have cultivated or formed the nucleus of a team in years ahead. However, it's become apparent to me that they haven't been able to step up to the mark. Uh, you know, in recent times when we've suffered uh, injuries to the likes of Hatati and Abada uh, and Maida and Cameron uh, Carter Vickers. And Brendan, I trust, as I've said many, many times, I think we're very fortunate to have a guy uh, of uh, his managerial nous at the helm at Celtic Park. Well, I also have to say, uh, Paul, several weeks ago when Rangers signed Paul Clement, uh, I was on record on the programme as saying, this guy has got a gravitas that Michael Beale uh, lacked. Uh, he has got a very impressive CV and, if you like, a glittering resume. He's nobody's mug. Yep. This guy won three successive titles in his time in Belgium with Genk, a provincial club, and uh, two titles uh, with, with Bruges. Now, what I'm hoping is, uh, and I spoke to Andy Walker a couple of weeks ago, and Andy agreed with me, and I said, if the board don't back uh, Brendan Rodgers in the January transfer man- window, that will be unforgivable in the eyes of many Celtic supporters. Yep. I can't speak for other Celtic sports, I've also said on occasions. Yeah. I can only volunteer my own opinions. But if they fail to buy Brendan in January, I think that will be absolutely disgraceful. The panel starts. Ross, would you agree with that? We'll come to the panel in a second. The Celtic fan is on. Hi, Ross. Hi, Paul. How are you doing? Okay. Yeah, good. Thank you. What about Laurie's point there? The, the boards have to back Brendan Rodgers with good signings 
in January? Yeah, no, definitely. I'd agree with that. I think the board have been nothing but shambolic. Um, they've left Brendan out. The fact they've basically hung him out to dry. Um, now, in terms of the situation, I don't know what was agreed in the summer when Rogers took the job, if he was guaranteed X, Y and Z, but it's evidently clear that these players are not good enough for Celtic. And for Celtic to lose to Kilmarnock and Hearts back-to-back, if you're telling me that Celtic don't have enough quality to beat teams like that, then I'm sorry, but the board really, really need to take a hard right good hard look at themselves. Mark? Yeah, you've got, you've, you've, you've got to back the manager. I mean, the, the thing just now that appears to be, if you want to call it um, that old phrase, Paul, that you know, we, we were used to 30 years ago, Celtic in crisis. So I think the, the, the supporters, and, and if, if you want to call it, it's a mini crisis just now, they're still top of the league. The title's still in their hands, albeit there's no doubt that Rangers could go top if they win their games in hand. And they've also got Rangers to come at Celtic Park on December the 30th. So a lot can switch between now and the closure of the, uh, of the for the winter break on January 2. But it's saying up to, to, to Celtic. And I think the board and the recruitment department, um, given the, the levels of animosity towards them on Saturday with 50,000 fans, are left in no doubt that they need to raise their game. And I think the support would say, back the manager, you know, back the manager and give him what he wants. So I'll repeat myself, if you bring back Brendan Rodgers and you don't allow him to make the key decisions within the football department, then what is the point of having him there? There is no point to it. He is the most qualified person, bar none, the most qualified person in the building to make decisions about football. And if he doesn't um, exert his authority in January, then ultimately it's going to cost him his job. Uh, and I think as well, uh, look, with the window coming up, the preparation is already in play. And, and I think for, for Celtic supporters, the start of the season, they would have said that they certainly, you know, another goalkeeper. And I agree with you, Mark. That's not that's probably not the priority, all right? But two or three players that can Im- improve your starting eleven because transfer windows need to be about improving your starting eleven. So, you know, Celtic definitely need another striker um, to be challenging uh, with Kyogo. Um, Potentially light in the fullback areas, mm-hmm. yeah. Potentially light in the fullback areas, and maybe someone else in, in terms of the, the the middle of the park. Yeah. Although they have mm-hmm. so, some wonderful talent, but I have no doubt that, that Celtic will back and support uh, Brendan in this in this transfer window. It's just about getting the right players, like I said, because traditionally it's a it's a tough market because January, sorry, tough time, tough window because you've got players that are either not playing, yeah. Or or, um, or or out of favour, so they're not coming, and you, and you you need to hit the ground running. Yeah, I mean in football, you're not going to win every game, but the three three of the biggest chants on Saturday were sack the board, law will, please leave the building. I won't say they get, to, but that's <laughs> what they were saying, yep. and stand up for the Green Brigade. Now, if you're Peter Lowell, you say, wait a minute, I presided over the most successful period. Okay, it's not like '67 and '70 when they got to the European Cup final, but it's been almost without fail, success. So yeah, but, is but, it a but that's a lesson in terms of quite yeah. well you're ahead, Paul. You know, that, I think like that's that, yeah, yeah, I think that's a um a, a message and um a, you know when the fans start to turn that way there, there, there's a there's a message um and then I don't know why you'd put yourself in that position. Sure. You put yourself through that as a human being. Um what? however, um it's about winning games on on the football pitch. So the manager needs to step up the players most definitely need to step up, but collectively as a football club, they need to step up next month and give the manager control. For sure. What are they going to do about the Green Brigade? You, Ross, what, what would you do? Because there's some great things they do, there's some things that absolutely shouldn't be happening, some of them, but definitely it's not the same place without their vocal support. Yep, yeah, no, definitely. I think there needs to be an element of they need to behave ourselves. I agree with that. Um, but we need to remember that the Green Brigade are basically the heart and soul of the atmosphere in Celtic Park, and without them, you're basically... Without, with, uh, me, personally, I think, without the Green Brigade, we're basically a man down, and that's how it feels. And when you watch the game on Saturday, Celtic go 2 all down. I believe if the Green Brigade are inside that stadium on Saturday, Celtic come back and win that 3-2. Mm-hmm. But without them, it's... Just something missing. And but Ross, see, see, on that point, I mentioned it earlier in the program. I don't know if you heard that. I think that's an easy out. And, and, and I'll go back to I'll use a, I'll use an analogy. It's like oh, January's a difficult month to do business. 
It's not impossible. Yeah. Actually, yeah. They, they, what, you only, can you only do your job well two months of the year? No, get the job done in January, particularly when you've got 70 million quid in the bank. Surely you should be able to go and do your job in terms of identifying four or five top players to come in and, and, and help your team. Um, and in terms of the, the Green Brigade, I get it. What is a Green Brigade? I know it's what is it, officially 250 members or something, but ultimately that kind of singing sex of the ground. What is it? Is it about between two and 3,000? Is that roughly about right, Ross? I think so, Mark. Yeah, yeah right, right about that. So what's, what's to stop the 50,000 Celtic fans that's in the stadium for Saturday from generating a bit of that atmosphere? Are you all gagged when you get into the stadium? No, no I, so, I, I, so on I, I, it, I'm, I'm being genuine, I'm not being flippant yeah, when I say that. Yeah. What is to stop 50,000 other supporters actually stepping up and saying, the Green Brigade are only here for whatever reason, it might not ever be reconciled, you just don't know. But at the moment, the Green Brigade are not here, but there's 50,000 of us inside the stadium, the team need our help. Laurie, you've been around for a few years, um, as I have too. What's your wise counsel? What would you do about the Green Brigade from the point of view of getting the atmosphere back and reuniting your club? Well, Paul, in answer to the question, you know that I've spoken in favour of the Green Brigade because yeah. I, they have you know, generated a tremendous atmosphere uh, within the ground. Uh, however, uh, Mark is right. Uh, other people have to stand up and be counted. Now, I'm 68 years of age. So my days as a crooner, perhaps, are long gone. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you know yourself out, <laughs> Laurie? Who's younger than myself? <laughs> they'll be able to respond accordingly. Uh, I think I'll kind of uh, Paul, about the, the, the Green Brigade. Yes, they do generate an atmosphere. Yes, I do admire uh, the fact that, you know, I've watched them on route to the stadium in match days, uh, collecting uh, and organising food banks for the needy uh, in our community. And they're very true to the principles of Celtic's charitable origins and beginnings. However, the flip side of the coin is that, you know, the fines that, that we, the club has amassed, eventually, uh, the authorities of UEFA, it's inevitable. They've got to say, well, hang on a second, fines have proven no deterrent uh, here. And the next stage which concerns me is, it could well be, if this continues unabated, that UEFA might decide that Celtic will have to play games uh, in closed stadiums or have a deduction of points. That's what concerns me. So that's my, my, yeah. that's my balanced take on the Green Brigade, Paul. Sure. And for everyone, the big thing is Celtic netted £29.7 million from this season's Champions League. So can we call it £30 million? It's huge. It's even more for next season because it's no longer the group stages it's the sure. new mini leagues so right. you know Ross as a Celtic fan how are you going to put it right if you were if you were at the top of the tree at Celtic if you're Dermot Desmond what are you going to do? I think what we need to do first of all is we need to get the squad in order I think we need to get rid of the deadwood players that don't play are players that are taking a wage we need to get rid of people that don't play we need to improve. I agree with Mark. What you mean. A striker is evident. If we don't sign a striker in January, it is criminal. It is absolutely criminal. Wingers, Mikey Johnston, again, all due respect to him, he's playing because he's only getting a game because of shorter numbers. A guy like Mikey Johnston should be nowhere near that Celtic squad. David Turnbull, a guy, again, he's, he's bang average, but for me, he's not a Celtic player. And we need to sign quality. If Celtic want to go anywhere, we need to sign players that are going to improve us, not just make us better. We want to be better than better. So that's the first problem. The first problem is getting the squad correct and getting players that are more than capable of doing something in Europe for Celtic. Ross, thanks a lot for your call. Thank you, Laurie, as well. Greg, um, you wouldn't have guessed this a couple of months ago, would you, that this would be the narrative around... Celtic. No, it sounds familiar, but it was it was to, to Rangers. You know, yeah. like I said, in terms of the recruitment, in terms of the uh, you know the unrest with the, with the supporter base. Um, but look, f fans fans react Paul to to what they see on the on on the, uh, the field. You know, so if they're seeing energy, they're seeing a a commitment, um, and obviously they're seeing the results. And Mark, they're right behind you. You know, yeah. but obviously the the results have have not really been unbelievable of recent. The performances haven't haven't been great. Um, and it's not as if like Celtic don't have the quality. What they don't have at this moment in time is is maybe the confidence pull, um, and and that's something that is really really important. Strengthening, they will definitely get the opportunity to to, to strengthen because the money is there. 
it just means that they're going to have to go and pay decent money. Uh, it's, it's easy to identify a striker. It's just what that deal or how much that money is going to be. But they definitely need that. Um, I'd be quite happy, Paul, if they don't do anything in the in the window. I'll be, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Um, but like I said, the supporters, for the first time, in a long time, there's a little bit, you know, a little bit of unrest there. Well, it's the first time since season 20, 21, yeah. during yeah. COVID, when Celtic started the season. Kept players like Edouard that probably would have gone. To be fair to them, yeah. I think they kept them because they thought, get yeah, 10 big, in a row. Big Julie, it just didn't Julie, work. There was a few. Yeah, and right. it, and yeah. if, you, if you look back to that, actually, there was just a collective collapse yeah. around the mm -hmm. whole football club. There was no support. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was a collective collapse. The yeah. recruitment was appalling. Yeah. A jetty, Barkas. Um, the board yep. went up to recruit, you know, recruitment. Um, some of the decisions made, some of the things. So yeah, it was a collective collapse, and Rangers took full advantage of that season. They went what by was it more than twenty points? I 20 think. End up five, when they won the title. Twenty-five. Points, yeah. 25. Think, yeah. Here's Brendan Rodgers. He is on the way. In fact, it's not going to happen there. But he was talking about the mentality of his players yeah, after that defeat. It's mentality. It's 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 an ambition and a drive from within. Uh, and a spirit that, that keeps pushing you. Like I said, you get guys like Callum McGregor who has this incredible mindset and you see him today, he's having to play two or three positions to, uh, uh, in order to, to look to get the team going in the game. Um, but that's something that comes from, uh, from within and um, we, uh, we, need to, we need to activate that. And ML3 boy has been on, a Celtic fan has said at Go Football Show, Brendan Rodgers can hint about the players not being good enough, but his subs at the weekend were baffling. Palma off for a left back. Yeah, Bernab Bernabai reappeared at the weekend, didn't he? There are some strange things going on. Is it trying to put him in a window? But there's three points at stake yeah. for with so, Rangers coming yeah. up. Yeah. yeah, it was. You look at you look at some of the options. Um, yeah, it was. It was. Should sometimes managers do it? Paul at saying, you know, well, this is a hand I've got to play with. Look how actually how weak we are. I mean, Bernabai shouldn't be anywhere near the club. He's well overstayed his welcome. Three and a half million quid he cost. Um, so he's part of the dead wood that Ross, the previous caller, was mentioned, could quickly get shot of. There's, I mean, there's, there'll be the guts of a hundred grand a week sitting contribute, contributing course, hee haw. Yeah. Um, so, but you won't, you won't get to correct all the wrongs in one window, Paul. But the priority should be getting the four players in that the manager wants in the positions that he's identified. Now, if you can get rid of Deadwood as well along the way, great. But your focus should be getting the guys in. And Ross said there, you know, to make his, was it make us strong in Europe again, make us win games in Europe again. No, it's actually about winning the league again. It's about retaining your title. That's a priority. Not, not what's something that's 10 months down the line. Something that's in the here and now because Rangers, at the moment, with this manager, they've got the real deal. They've also got a physicality. They've got players that, that are confident. The Rangers aren't the finished article. No. You know they've huffed and puffed in a lot of games this season as well, including a few under Philippe Clement. But they're there. Mm -hmm. There's definitely something about Rangers under Philippe Clement that can suggest absolutely that Rangers can go on and win the title. We're going to speak to a Rangers fan next. The Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. For your free energy home survey and a bespoke quote, call 0800 233 5788. Let's go! Rangers lift the first trophy of the season, the League Cup. Good looking trophy, isn't it? It's an unusual, you'll know it well, having won it two or three times. Rangers winning it more than any other. So they are back on track under Philippe Clement. Or are they still some big tests to come? They play St. Johnson Wednesday evening, Aberdeen in action as well. So celebrations for the players, Craig, would be, it's not the way it would be at the end of the season, for example, if you win the Scottish Cup, I would imagine. No, no, look at a game, but the, the players, um, you know, we're allowed to, to let their hair down for a few hours, which is, which is great. Um, like it says, you know, you know in, in your career, you've got to celebrate yeah. those kind of moments. But at the same time, Paul, the professionalism now, uh, from the players, from within a, any other football clubs, in terms of you know your recovery and all sort of stuff, they'll be back sure. ready to go. It's a massive game on Wednesday night. Sure, right. this is the the one of the catch up games. Yep. Yes, Good story, but, but I mean, part of the chat this evening has been about you know Rangers are, are now the only team that can do a treble. Yep. Um, now the last Rangers team, unless I'm mistaken, to do a treble, 2003. Correct. Which you were a you? part of. Yes, 2002, 2003. Now, how did how did you, how did the celebrations yeah. go? 
I'll tell you, the Crickle would make record profits. I'll tell you what, every every pub in Bromwell and Arrington did. From when you from when you beat (laughs) them firm on that afternoon, the Sunday night, the Scottish Cup final against Dundee six days later. Did you did you get much training? Did Big Alec have you in for (laughs) much training during that six days? Mark wasn't a great deal. I'll tell you what, the party went for about four days, um, and and the funny thing was that uh, in the final. Uh, I think you know players like Arthur Newman uh, were, were were pulling up and, and cramping all that sort of stuff. Yet he wasn't out for the four days. We, we were going all right. <laughs> we, we were going all right. Connor, how was your celebration last night? A big Rangers fan in the line. Good evening. Yeah, good evening, uh, gents. Yeah, listen, you know, um, like everybody else, just absolutely delighted to get a a cup back. Yeah. That you know we. As you mentioned, have one more than anybody else. It's, it's phenomenal. So I don't know what the noise is there, Connor. If you could get the handset up and yeah, let's get it closer to you. So what are you thinking? What's your main point on Rangers tonight? Yeah, sorry, is that better? Can you hear me now? I think so. Yeah, there was a lot of other noise. I don't know. I saw it. Yeah, there we go. Should should be all good there. Um, yeah, I think. You know, it's a huge step for us, obviously, um, and it's a step in the right direction. I think it also shows, because a lot of people are asking for a while, you know, what's the difference between what Clement's been doing since he came in and Michael Beale, because they both had similar unbeaten starts. But this is a difference because in these big moments, when it's mattered the most, his team has stepped up. Michael Beals didn't. He had the same opportunity that Clement's just took. He could have won a league cup last season after just a short period in charge and failed to do so whereas come on I think has shown the class he's got because look, it was never going to be easy against Aberdeen um, they would have been confident having beaten Frankfurt and having taken points off us already this season so I think the fact that we were in the way we did um, and, and just went about our business okay it wasn't pretty but we got the job done says a lot about these players and when you look at it as well, of the start of eleven, Aberdeen had six yellow cards. That shows you just how physical they were in the game. Um, albeit, I must admit, I do think Graham Shinney, it's remarkable that he didn't get booked until the 87th minute. I can't quite understand. I'm also letting the game go, but how many fouls did he? In my opinion, he actually was lucky to stay in the pitch, but it doesn't matter. Um, you know, so we were in a battle. Um and we came out on top. Now it's about can we move forward? Can we win the two games in hand and get a result um, at, at Parkhead on the 30th of December? And then all of a sudden we start the year in pole position, having been, I think at one point, people were already sewing the Celtic ribbons on the league title. Well, not not anymore. I don't know how you can sew <laughs> ribbons on a, a title that way, Connor. But listen, the difference is, though, and I hear what you say, but when Celtic went out of the League Cup in, what was that, August, beginning mm-hmm. of September, still the summertime, Rangers then had the best opportunity, yes. which they have taken, but you didn't have to play Celtic Correct, on the way. It reminds yeah. me a lot of uh, when Alex McLeish come in. Yeah. You know, the opportunity yeah. to win, yeah, I think it was the League Cup first, and then maybe won the double, and then led to the, the treble mm-hmm. the, the following season. What Clermont has shown that Michael Beale um, did fail uh, at was, was that big moment. Taking that big moment, an opportunity to, to, to win the League Cup, it, it is huge. Um, and what I'm liking more and more when I hear Clermont speak is it's progressive. It's not, not standing still. Um, and it's about continually looking to, to improve. It's about what players do day in, day out on the training field that will then have a say-come selection. Um, and and that, that drives competition. And that, that drives good standards. And, and you're starting to see that. Look, Rangers have certainly not been flashy at all under Clermont. At all. But they've been very professional. Um, you know, the, the game, obviously the cup final, it was an arm wrestle. I didn't expect anything less than, than, than it being an arm wrestle. Rangers need to be, had to be set up well in terms of the, the counter-attacks uh, because Aberdeen defended uh, well and looking to pounce. They've done that well. Um, well enough to go and, and get the result but like I says I mean people are not going to think of it as a flashy final but it's down as a, as a win for Rangers and the first trophy it's not the first final Mark that hasn't been for the purists no they, re- they really are yeah. Paul, partic- <laughs> you know, particularly when it's in the, the middle of December yeah. uh, you know it's dark by the time it kicks off it, 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 it's wet the rain's coming down and both teams 
have come in in the back of you know Thursday night exertions, particularly Rangers being, being in Spain and winning the game. Aberdeen had more of a luxury in terms of resting players, but they yeah. still had to get a tune out. The players and credit to them beating nine tracked. Frank, so you put all those ingredients into the point. I don't think it was ever going to be a classic. I think it was just a great phrase. I think an arm wrestle. It's a brilliant yeah. way um, to describe um, the game. But ultimately, it's about winning the trophy. You just do what you need to do to get up those stairs or be on the podium holding the trophy. That's all that matters. That's the first job done. Actually, it's the second job done. First job for, for Philippe Clement was qualifying from Europe. And again, let's give credit to Michael Beale. He got the ball rolling by beating Betis at home. It's proved to be a real, uh, real, real positive result. She so kicked it on. Um, number two in the tick box list, win the cup. Done that. Number three is to now win every game and go to Celtic Park and not lose. So let's see if Philippe Clement can go and do that. That's his next task. To hang in there or possibly be top of the league. But make sure you don't lose any ground. Um, and Celtic and then the next task for him is where he, he's kind of powerless if you like is what can the board do to support him in January because he's show, he's backed the board um, by getting results they've clearly made a very good appointment now together they need to come together and find a way now you can't put yourself in financial peril but what can they do to support him to go and say Philippe Clement said I need A, B and C you get me B and C, we've got a right chance of winning the title or doing a treble, whatever you want to put it. So let's see what they can do during the month um, of, of January and then where it kicks off when they go back. But so far, Philippe Clement has delivered what's been asked of him. I like the way he speaks. There's no bluster. He's straight to the point. I think he's, he's kept a lot of stuff in-house um, as well. Apart from, I think there's just been one instance we, we, we can't well when he's going off message and starting a feud again with Sutton. All that needs to be nipped in the bud. James Tavernier spoke well yesterday when they win mm -hmm. the cup. You keep it. You, keep, you, you celebrate, but you don't get carried away. Keep a lid on it. Yeah. yeah. Here's what he said after winning the cup yesterday about his priorities when he came in, what, just eight weeks ago? To say what was the priority because it was a lot of things at the same time. It was to make them more brave on the ball, to give them also a clear structure how to play with and without the ball. It was about creating a synergy again with the fans. It was about giving them confidence in themselves, but also in each other, and also get uh, a better connection between players on the pitch and off the pitch. Uh, it was uh, getting a better condition. It was about getting players back. It's been a lot of things, but that's why this job is also so nice. Uh, you have a lot of things to do. Did you hear that, Connor and Craig, first of all? Um, better condition? Yeah, no, look, for me, like I said, Clement, I think the turning point for Clement was when, when Rangers were still in, in the earlier stages, they were 1-0 down at Hearts, sorry, Hearts at home, and they come back and scored two late goals yeah. to win 2-1. Yeah. It's a huge, huge mm. three points and a lift. Look, there have been a couple of blips in terms of, I would say, performance, but Rangers have actually got, yeah. got away with it, Paul. Aberdeen away was a poor performance, mm. and managed to come away with a draw. Limassol... Uh, and the European Knights have been special, it was a poor showing. Yeah. Managed to, to rectify that by going away and getting an amazing result against Betis. So the great thing about Clement at this moment in time is there's real accountability. Um, so, so with that becomes responsibility, and, and players are, uh, you know, are thriving under that. Tavernier, again, does get his fair share of criticism, but he's been, he's been very, very good. And then the art of being a good, good manager is... Recognising players that, that that may be you know Sterling, so he's yeah. he's naturally not that position, but you know what he's needed something, uh, and he's been brave enough, so he's seen something in training to to throw him in there. That for me is good management. Your old teammate has said a couple of times Rangers will buy, you know, two or, or buy or get loans in January. Yep. Um, it's Barry, I'm talking about. Yep. Are you also confident that's going to happen? Well, I think that, that again, the money is there to support some some business in the window. For me, I would love to see another striker, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and I'm sure Clement will be looking at, again, how do I improve my starting eleven? That's always got to be yeah. the priority. When, you, when you're going to market, yeah. it's, it's, it's not... Rangers and Celtic have got big squads. It's not bringing in a squad player. How are you going to go and improve that starting eleven? Mm -hmm. Because that, that's what takes you forward. Absolutely. The, the, the one phrase, I mean, I thought he, he came away with seven or eight We bullet points here, Paul. That, you know, that all made sense and all that. And the, and the one that I really thought, oh, I was one who said, improve the connection between the players. Yeah, yeah. Which is so yeah, important. So yeah. clearly, he's sort of, 
they weren't quite playing for one another they weren't pulling all together us you know and he thought right let's get that together too the connection between the supporters and, and, and the field because if we go back to the horror show in Cyprus oh, which just was, before yeah, he took oh, over I mean, unless horror. I'm mistaken they're saying Tavernier and Gold so they shouldn't have ever wear the jersey again with some yeah. of the feedback you're getting from the fans so he's turned that around in eight weeks mm -hmm. to make Tavernier a, a, a captain holding a piece uh, of silver but I thought that was a real insight there the connection between the players and give them and by the way what I mean I think it's a real what an indictment is a Michael Beale a sad indictment yeah give them a clear structure of how to play with and without the yeah, ball yeah. a clear structure mm. of how to play with and without the ball top point top point Mark because again we look at Andrew's success at Celtic right and anybody that has been in a room or sat through meetings uh, with Ange Postacoglu is it's very, very clear. Structure with, structure without ball. Clement, exactly, exactly the same. But I think the again, it's back to there's there's no one player bigger than the football club. There can never be a player bigger than the football club. So I think where Clement's done really, really well is is again it's a team and it's about the team. No one is standing out. Connor, good call. The Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. Design your bespoke solar PV system and meet your energy needs with no upfront costs. Let's go. The Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. Thank you for making the switch and to the programme. Um, 08, 08, 17, 17, 700, but we've been flying through it this evening. So much Rangers with the first trophy of the season. And Celtic still top of the table, five points clear of Rangers. Rangers, of course, now with two games in hand. And Craig, I'm just thinking Wednesday night's a big game, St Johnson coming to town against Rangers. But it's one you would expect to take three points, narrow the gap to two. Well, look, it's a home game, yeah. uh, but you cannot take anything for granted. Craig Levine's come into St Johnston and uh, they've done really well. Uh, so again, you know, you've got to make sure that you start in the right manner. Uh, but a home game, Paul, that you would like to think that Rangers will be too strong here. Uh, but I, like I said, St Johnston, new manager, new manager. He's not, he's, you know, not yesterday, but uh, made a, a real good impact with St Johnston so far. Thank you for that contribution. <laughs> G A R, the Go Assisted Referee on the Go Radio Football Show with CSD Air Conditioning, comforting air quality all year round. Penalty to Rangers, penalty to Celtic. It didn't happen at the weekend for either of them. Look, so the cup final yesterday, there wasn't too much in it. Some of the Aberdeen fans are happy about the, the melee at the end of the game. So did Jack Butland, did he trip up Duke in the box, do you feel? There were so many bodies in there. That was one of the... It was, and yeah. I, look, I didn't see anything in, in that. Obviously, it was at a stage right, well, right at the end of the match there. Mm. There was a bit of uh, pushing and, and, and shoving and... For me, I, I felt as if the referee dealt with the, the situation in, in, in the way that he should. I didn't see any penalties or, or, or anything like that. But you can understand Aberdeen fans can looking stage. for it right at yeah, the end. Yeah, right at the end. Right Take at the end of the match. I mean, for the neutral, the good news was it didn't go to extra time because it wasn't a great game of football. Mark, was there anything in that, do you think, in that moment? It, it looks as though there's contact from Jack Butland on um, Duke. Is it a clear and obvious error? Uh, I don't think so. Um, but part of the anger of the Aberdeen supporters and frustration will be because they, they saw their team um, have a penalty given against them from VAR at Petaudry three or four weeks ago and they would argue was that a clear and obvious mm. error when there was a, there was a shirt tug mm. on, uh, on Conor Goldson um, but to answer the immediate question of what happened yesterday I think there's contact but I, I I don't think I can see enough to say for sure Paul that it's a penalty kick You heard Conor there a Rangers fan saying should Graham Shinney have been booked earlier on. There were, what, 10 yellow cards? Uh, was it six to Aberdeen? So, arguably, maybe he should have been, but... Don't yeah, know. He, yeah. Could, he could have, but again, yeah. you know, for me, I've got no... He, he's a competitor, uh, yeah. so he's in, a, he's in a bout, and, you know, when he, when he plays against you, you don't like him, but if he's on your team, you, you kind of love mm -hmm. him, that type of player. So, no issues, Paul, with, with, with um, the minutes that he got before, before he yeah. got a yellow card. And the other one is uh, Cantwell, so was seen... To, there's a shirt pull. He pulled a shirt. There was. Yeah, he pulled a red shirt. Yeah. yeah. So, Aberdeen fans are saying, hey, you know, Rangers got it in their favour mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago, but Aberdeen didn't get it in their favour yesterday, so... And I can understand that, by the way, uh, because there's clearly a, a, a decent tug from Cantwell mm. uh, on the Aberdeen player, um, and we have seen penalties given mm. uh, for that. I, I think that the Aberdeen player... 
because he stays up and it doesn't kind of shift him or he's still able to move and all. If, if the player goes to ground, then it's obviously a completely different situation that would have been looked at differently, in my opinion. Yeah. So, again, Cantwell was, was very... You can't afford to, to be grabbing in the box because yeah. it's normally yeah. a penalty. Yeah. Yeah, it's a clear jersey talk. And again, it comes down to consistency. Paul, we've seen them given um, and it wasn't given yesterday. So, again, frustration, anger... Um, from uh, from the Aberdeen um, supporters but ultimately um, the, the, the game is gone now Rangers have won the cup they sure have Livingston got a penalty at the weekend but oh. my goodness how Bruce Anderson regrets missing it that it shaved the post didn't it yeah. so they could have I don't think there's controversy around it though I'm just looking to see 0-0 Livy against Kilmarnock at Dundee 1-0 against Ross County the 97th minute so Luke McCown really with a brilliant free kick Comes back and Shaughness is there to convert. So anything much there? Um, St. Johnson 1 0 against Hibs. Feel free to jump in. Graham Carey scoring. So that's a big win. I mean, Craig Levine's learned something about football management, hasn't he? Yeah, Mark, but, you know. Paul, it was a perfect. I think it suited Craig Levine to a T, the, the, the job that he had to get in there and do. Oh. Hey, well, the, the bottom of the table. Um, yeah. they, they, they just needed a bit of structure, a bit of resilience, and be hard to break down. So there's another clean sheet there and go and try and nick a point if you can. Um, and I have to say if you're Nick Montgomery if you're Hibs it's a criminal goal to lose oh. but but it's, it just sums Hibs up Paul you watch the highlights and yeah. sports scene every Saturday night the amount of chances they gift the opposition by playing around their own penalty box frightens me it absolutely frightens me and this time it felt like a guy who's got a wonderful left mm-hmm. foot in Graham Carey and he's executed it brilliantly in off the post mm-hmm. um, past uh, David Marshall. So, you know, I deserve three points for St. Johnson. For sure. Top finish, a top yeah, finish. But you're right, I, I, you, it, I, you can't get away with that every single week. It's, 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 it's inviting trouble. Um, but manager wants to play that way. Craig, you're in the headlines already tonight. Oh, breaking then. news yeah. from the programme tonight. Yes. Philippe Clement. So you insist Rangers title uh, tilt is still on. Absolutely. But that Clement, was true. Clement <laughs> won't want to even whisper about a title prediction. So there you are. You're, you're in the record already. What? <laughs> think too much coffee today in here. Okay, so there you are. It's in the record uh, already there online. online so yeah. Mark... You and I are not mentioned. So. <laughs> Your traffic is <laughs> exactly, <right>? exactly. <laughs> Back tomorrow night. So, um, yeah, we'll see you then. So, anything, right. So, what about the Celtic game? So, Lauren Shanklin, the goal early yes. on, took it well. Where was the defence? In fact, yeah. but, it wasn't a, but to the penalty then. Uh, not the penalty, the free kick for Hearts. Great 27, free years, uh, 27 yards out. Should it have been a, a free kick? So, oh, Carter yeah. Vickers. Um, got the ball first so many Celtic fans say that shouldn't have been a free kick what do you think? I thought they looked a, a, a follow through into the Hearts players leg to be honest eh, Paul Kevin Clancy is only a few yards from it um, when, when the award was given for the free kick um, I didn't have a, an issue with it I thought the referee called it um, correctly I think Carter Vickers did you know, plead his case at the time which may suggest maybe the, the Hearts players made the most of it but um, I thought it was a foul yeah, no, same. And look, I think you look at it two ways. Obviously, the Kingsley is a it's a wonderful free kick. Yeah. Um, but it it is from a you know quite a distance where you maybe think, well, is, is Joe Hart able to shift his feet a little bit quicker and get across it, or maybe his starting position? Mark, I think did it's he more his starting position. His starting clear, position. Yeah. I don't think from that distance yeah. he needed to be so far to the right. Yes. Yeah. Did he go down in instalments? <laughs> <laughs> that great old uh, terrible line. So well, was it like an yeah. MFI wardrobe? That was um, it. Yeah. Nah, look, I, again, yeah. I think he's unfortunately for me, he's been uneasy. To, but you look at some of the same. I'll go oh. back to the the St Johnston sure. save, Paul mm. at McDermott Park. Massive. Um, you know that was a massive yeah. uh, save at, at Feyenoord. You know he's he's pulled off a couple of saves um, there as well. Look, there's no doubt the, the goalkeeping situation needs to be. Uh, address you've got to go and try and improve in Joe Hart but for me it's not a priority position next month that's our own VAR Go Radio's VAR assisted that's you up to date next Monday oh next Monday's Christmas Day of course <laughs> but when we come back on it, the countdown will be on to December 30th G-A-R the Go assisted referee on the Go Radio football show with CSD air conditioning 24 hour heating and cooling specialists
And in the championship at the weekend, Dundee United Wraith Rovers, and it's uh, the Rovers who yeah, are Barry's tip for the, the title. Yeah, yeah, yep, Barry's tip. What for does the, he know about football? For the, <laughs> for the title, yeah, it's great amazing, result. isn't it? Brilliant yeah. result to go to Tannadice and yeah. beat um, Dundee United. Yeah. What a result for a broth as well, beating Inverness. Jimmy McIntyre just in the door there, beating yeah. big dunks at uh, Inverness, yeah. and for Doogie Emery, um, a win for Morton against Queens Park that puts Queens Park bottom of the table they've got a lot of tough work ahead and, and Partick Thistle great result with Dunfermline Paul yeah. to go to East End Park and, and win there it's, it's a brilliant division the Championship so much more to come yeah Wraith Rovers top of the table on 39 after 16 games Dundee United on 34 they have a, a game in hand Partick Thistle the Harry Rags on 28 still in the mix in the playoff position and Dunfermline on 21 then Morton Ayr and Airdrie on 17, Inverness on 16, Arbroath on 15, and the team who led the table for much of last season, Queen's Park, on 13. So it'll be interesting to see who's going to be the new manager there. I mean, great club, a lot of money's gone into it, great planning, but at the moment, they're in it. In Division 1, big win for Falkirk, Falkirk yeah. against Hamilton, uh, Hamilton Ackies. Yeah. So, but uh, Falkirk back top of the table. Yeah, but uh, yeah, great result, yeah, yeah. you know, to go to, to Hamilton. Yeah. Uh, and one there because John Rankin's really got Hamilton going so no credit to, to John McGlynn and, 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 and Stephen McGinn I think Stephen was on the bench um, yeah. you know a real good result for Falkirk and, and they might take a bit of shifting now Paul now that they're top Rangers have won the League Cup here's the manager excited, of course really happy proud also um, if I see the the part that uh, the team has taken the last nine weeks everybody sees the team who is growing also, it's not easy after a historical win on Thursday in an away game in Seville with uh, traveling and everything to have the same focus that they had today. So that was a main, main, main thing for me also. Um, and they did a brilliant job today. Uh, Aberdeen is a really hard team to beat. It's a team who's really structured. They, they love to defend and play very direct. So we took out, out also really good the transitions and we created really good chances. Uh, unluckily, again, the goalkeeper had, uh, had a really big day today of the opponent, but uh, in the end, uh, we, we deserved this, this victory uh, very clearly, I think. And you could tell in the coverage how much it meant to the players, the yeah. staff and the Rangers fans. Yeah, no, very much so, Paul, because look, it's a team that they've taken a lot of criticism yeah. and rightfully so, I think, in, in recent times. But you, you certainly, you have to pr praise uh, Clement and, and his players because you know, since he's come in, they've really stepped up to the plate. Um, they've found that confidence. Um, they've found that, that, that know-how to, to, to get over the line, even when they haven't been fantastic. And uh, even, even yesterday, like I said, just, you know, Aberdeen were, were, were always going to be dangerous on the counter-attack, Paul. So, you know, Balogun, I thought, was very, very good. Goldson, again, who, who's, you know, good experience, I thought, you know, they were on it. And because of that, then you got, you, you know, you got the opportunity and go and, and, and score a goal. Tavernier, who's, who's put in huge performances um, and, and is really enjoying a, a good run. But Clement, I think, like I said, just setting the standards, competitive, and they're, and, and they're going out at the moment and delivering. But there will be a time, Paul, when it kind of they they do get that bad result. Just hopefully it's not against Celtic on the thirtieth. Twenty four hours earlier, yeah, from the Rangers <laughs> win yesterday. Cameron Carter Vickers <laughs> said after Celtic had lost two 0 to Hearts, um, stay calm, stay calm. And the manager said, long way to yeah, go. Listen, there's a long, long way to go, of course. So um, as I said, there's there's so much more to play for. Um, but certainly what we've seen in the last week in the league. Away at St Johnson here today, we uh, will need to, you know, bring our game to a completely different level. Tale of two teams in the same city. Yeah, and how quickly it turns, Paul. Yeah. How quickly um, it turns. But we're not even at the halfway stage yet. Uh, of the, there is so much to play for. There's a transfer window coming up next month. There's a game at Celtic Park between Celtic and Rangers on December um, the 30th. So look, it's 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 brilliant for Scottish yeah. football. We've got a title race. We have a title race, so there's no doubt about that. There is a title race on. It's great for us, great for both sets of supporters, both dressing rooms, managers, etc. And for Celtic just now, Paul, it's all about the next game, Livingston at home, because Celtic Park was reverberating in a negative way on Saturday afternoon. Make no mistake about that. And it's now up to Brendan Rodgers and the players 
to step up and arrest that decline on Saturday afternoon and then it's up to the board and everybody else in January to get the work done but right now it's about the manager and the players that he has and getting three points on Saturday Fancy this again yeah. tomorrow night Mark Guidi Why not you. Paul? Let's come on with John Harson. Craig, great performance tonight Thank uh, you Well done to good your rest tonight. Yeah, I think it's early to bed for you, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> it's going to be. Oh, you've done well. All right, thank yeah. you. Thanks a million. See Cheers, you Paul. Tomorrow night at five. The Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. Design your bespoke solar PV system and meet your energy needs with no upfront costs. Let's go. Global Eco Energy sell and install renewable energy products to domestic, commercial, and public sector customers. With access to a wide range of renewable energy products, including solar PV, battery storage, air source heat pumps, and eco garden makeovers, we offer a bespoke service tailored to your exact needs. For a free quote and to find out more about grants and funding options, go to global-eco.co.uk.